the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on this Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Creator in Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Recently, I was speaking with two physicians who were recalling their residencies when there were no limits to the amount of time a doctor in training could work. Once, one of the doctors said he found himself getting to such a place of exhaustion that he fell asleep on top of a person he had just, whose face he had just sutured, <laughs> landing on him. He, he, the sutures were still intact, though, thankfully. Another shared how he regularly worked all week until Sunday when he got off work at 4 p.m. and was so grateful for the time that he had then to take a break that he didn't have to go back to work until Monday at 8 a.m. And he remembered how that felt like an eternity um, from Sunday at 4 to Monday, 8 a.m. This compressed sense of time is not usually as extreme for most of us as it was for these doctors. But so many things conspire us against the time we have today and conspire against us that way for a sense of space and time. We so quickly lose our place and purpose in life as we are weighed upon by so many things, vying for our attention constantly. Worrying and doom scrolling, I'm guilty of that myself, I confess, can be for many a predominant way of being, <clears throat> such that we might even say that we are bent over by our culture and technology right now, literally looking down at our phones and figuratively carrying heavy burdens of concern for the future of our country and our world with progress thwarted by division and distraction. There are no real breaks from it all where we stand upright again, it seems. In the gospel today, Jesus sees a woman in the synagogue while he is teaching on the Sabbath we hear that she is bent over, suffering from an ailment that crippled her for 18 years. She's unable to stand up straight. As soon as Jesus sees her, he tells her she is freed from her ailment. And as he lays his hands on her, she does stand up straight and praises God. We are that woman, just as hearers past who heard this story understood themselves 
to be her. Her ailment is not just physical, but is spiritual. It is said that she is bound by Satan, the divider, the adversary, Satan, the one who tells us to reject the freeing claims of love and the gospel upon us. <clears throat> she and we often find it hard to stand up straight and remember who we are, daughters and sons of Abraham and Sarah, creatures made of the earth and in the image and likeness of God, friends of Christ, beloved people, all of us. Amid all that weighs us down, we have trouble seeing ourselves in the light of the gospel and scripture, seeing ourselves as friends of Christ. When Jesus said, come to me, you who are heavy burdened and are laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. I will give you rest for your souls. He meant to heal us and restore us from those things that cripple us and cause us to be bent over in life. Aidan Kavanaugh, my former liturgy professor, wrote about the spirit of the Sabbath in the, as we celebrated in the Eucharist. He said that the Eucharist is not just a remembrance of a past time, but it's a sweeping thanksgiving for all of God's benevolence for the whole world and God's people in Christ and the Holy Spirit. It's a recollection of all those things that were surrounded by love and made in love and restored in love. What Jesus did was to make human beings free and forgiven table partners with God. And that's who we are. It sets us free. The Eucharist does. We are given, in the Eucharist, we are given a new identity. Is it any accident that Jesus says even beasts of burden that carry loads, donkeys, and oxen will be taken to the water trough and drink up refreshing waters on the Sabbath? We come, become bent over like beasts of burdens carrying heavy loads when we don't give enough space for the healing work of Sabbath. Jesus is inviting us to the full freedom that comes through restoring meaning, values, identity, and drinking from the water of life. And we get this when we set some time aside for it. How can we access the healing power of the Sabbath? Frederick Buechner, a, a writer and pastor who I used to read a lot a long, some time ago, he helped so many of us see the depth of Christian faith, of the Christian life of faith in fresh ways. He died this past week, and I'm grateful for his ministry. He wrote, for the Jews, the Sabbath is the seventh day, Saturday. And for most Christians, it is the first day, Sunday. In either case, it is a day set aside from the other six as the day God himself blessed and hallowed, because on it God rested from all his work which he had done in his creation. Buechner describes how for most of us, it's a day like any other day, except the banks are closed. And maybe you get to go to, out to tennis or golf, he writes. And yet you think of God resting after the creation was finally all created. You think of the deep hush of it, like the hush between breakers at the beach. You think of the new creation itself resting, the gray squirrel, ceasing to twitch and chatter, the kingfisher settling down on the branch by the pond, the man and woman standing still in the garden. You think of God blessing this one day of the seven and hallowing it, making it holy. He goes on, the room is quiet. You're not feeling tired enough to sleep or energetic enough to go out. For the moment, there's nowhere else you'd rather go, no one else you'd rather be. You feel at home in your body. You feel at peace in your mind. For no particular reason, you let the palms of your hands <coughs> come together <coughs> and close your eyes. Sometimes it is only when you happen to taste a crumb of it that you dimly realize what it is you're so hungry for, you can hardly bear it. Thank you, Fred, for your amazing contributions to the life of faith. Anything that gives us that sense of eternity opening before us 
space opening before us, time that's created by God and given to us, recalls the wonder of God's extreme love for us, that lets us be forgiven and then go forgive ourselves and forgive others, captures the healing spirit of the Sabbath. One former member of the military described himself being on a ship and being very burdened by the regular regularity of his work. And he remembers Sunday worship being this space and time that he had that just tasted of rest. And he was so grateful for it. For many families now, travel, soccer, and lacrosse have taken over Sundays, which used to be reserved for the deeper practice of quiet, which we still need somehow. And yet, even in the midst of those sports, there can be that sacred presence of delight, right? My daughter, who played a lot of sports, would remind me not to be just a cranky priest who laments the loss of the Sabbath <laughs> and Sundays. <clears throat> Sabbath is a time where we listen to the one who is speaking. As the epistle reminds us, one who is underneath all reality and can change our worldview, Sabbath as remembrance, restoration of purpose, Sabbath as thanksgiving, giving back some of what we've been given, and let God be God. We so often have no days different from others, and we get hamstrung by our schedules. In his classic text on the Sabbath, Abraham Joshua Heschel, scholar and mystic, wrote that making time sacred was among the highest priorities of God, right after not making idols of anything else. And in the fourth commandment, to keep the Sabbath holy, he says, they all go together. And, and if we don't worship, if we, um, if, we, if we, the commandments to worship, not to worship other things besides God, go together with the commandment to take, remember the sacred dimension of time. And if we don't do so, will result in us worshiping something other than God. Just being so busy means that we don't have a chance to lay our hearts to rest somewhere else. When I was younger in high school and in college, I used to think that the goal of life was to do as much as I could in a day and get by on as little sleep as possible. And it was not uncommon that I slept for four to six hours through almost all of high school and college. And um, it wasn't that healthy, let me put it that way. <laughs> um, and um, it wasn't that healthy, and, and yet um, it wasn't until I made some decisions to do a little bit less and to take time to sleep that I discovered how much more life could be lived when a day of letting go happens. And now as a priest, I strive to take a day for Sabbath rest take vacation annually, go on retreat from time to time, so that once again, God can be God. The deep mystery of life in all its wonder reappears. At the heart of resting on Sabbath is a shalom, a peace that comes through wholeness, envisioning a restored world, envisioning ourselves made whole and restored and healed, standing upright. The Sabbath recalls the Passover, God's action to free our ancestors in faith. Our Eucharistic prayer recalls that freedom and the freedom of Christ, Christ risen, freed from constraints of time, healed from violence, to become a vision and friend and guide for all of us. Heschel writes, there is a realm of time where the goal is not to have, but to be, not to own, but to give, not to control, but to share. Not to subdue, but to be in accord. Life goes wrong when the control of space, the acquisition of things of space, becomes our sole concern. When we give ourselves over to this greater vision, by doing less on one day, giving a day or some part of a day back to God, taking breaks from our devices, we have to decide on how to use the rest of the time we have better. The core question of the Sabbath is what really constitutes healing rest. Does playing a word game on our phones count as rest? Maybe. Does exercise count? Maybe. 
Does coffee shop visit count? Maybe. A good hike in the woods? Maybe. Taking care of our physical needs is an important part of Sabbath rest. Sabbath doesn't require the expenditure of money. I would say that what constitutes a healing Sabbath is anything that gives us a deeper identity. Anything that causes us to come to rest in God. Church, I pray from liturgy and singing and praying together. Those first two hymns we sang today did this. They, they orient us back to rest our hearts on God. Reading scriptures, receiving Eucharist, to serving, always gives us a glimpse of the greater claim upon us. As St. Paul said, Sabbath rest is an experience of praying without ceasing, coming to rest in the trust of something more we call Christ. It means asking questions of what the deeper identity is. Who are we really? And whose are we really? And somehow Sabbath is an entry into the peace of wild things, as Wendell Berry would say. The things that are outside our knowing and the things of the divine where we say love created us, love called us, love will receive us. Bring my life to that wholeness again. A resting and outrageous love that started it all and a vision that completes us. How have you been freed or healed through the Sabbath? Have you discovered the deeper dimensions upon which you and we all rest claims of love from the very beginning of time. If you found that, has it called you forward to be healed and to heal and to serve? May you discover those deeper dimensions and again and again and discover a greater peace, peace and freedom. May you stand upright on this Sabbath. Amen.